The presence of humans has fundamentally altered the earth. People have literally lit up the night sky. People have built societies, created wealth, cured diseases, and developed new knowledge and ideas. But the impact of humans has fundamentally altered the very life support systems that made all of these changes possible. And this is particularly apparent in the Earth's atmosphere. Human activities have changed the concentrations of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and raised them to levels that haven't been seen in the last million years. You can go to the most remote places on the Earth and measure the presence of human-created substances like pesticides and industrial chemicals in the air and in living things. The pollution that humans are releasing impacts ecosystems and impacts people around the world. And emissions into the atmosphere can last for hours, but they can also last for days, weeks, months, even decades and centuries. The changes that people's activities re releasing CO2 have made to the climate, we're already seeing them, and they'll last for the rest of this century and for centuries beyond. But people don't experience the global average temperature. What people experience is fundamentally altered by what humans have done to the atmosphere. People experience extreme events, hurricanes, wildfires. People experience floods. And people rely on clean and healthy air to breathe. The air that people are breathing today, however, is far from clean and healthy worldwide. It's been estimated that over five million deaths are a result of human emissions, of dirty air, polluted air worldwide. The World Health Organization estimates that this is a quarter of all deaths from heart disease and over 40% of all deaths from lung disease. A major pollutant that's responsible for this is particulate matter, fine particles in the atmosphere that are smaller than the diameter of a human hair. We refer to this as PM 2.5. The 2.5 refers to the size, less than two and a half microns. And these particles are small enough for people to breathe in deep into their lungs, and they cause cardiovascular and respiratory damages and even mortalities. Another pollutant that we're concerned about is ozone, commonly known as smog, which is produced in the atmosphere, again, from the emissions that people are emitting. The emissions that people are emitting are coming from common sources. So one way in which these things are linked is because they're coming from common sources in transportation and in energy. So the emissions from these sources lead to both global warming, lead to climate change, as well as lead to the formation of particulate matter and ozone in the atmosphere. Another link between emissions and climate change and air quality is through the, the fact that climate change influences air quality. So climate change leads to increased wildfires. Wildfires affect air quality. Wildfires are, um, are increased when temperatures get warmer. The other link is through chemistry. So chemistry makes the formation of pollutants like ozone accelerate. So climate and air quality are fundamentally linked. And these are human goals. So thinking about goals like preventing health damages from air pollution, ensuring access from energy, and mitigating climate change are all human-focused problems. So how do we think about these problems, and how do we think about these problems together? If air pollution and climate change are fundamentally linked, how do we think about these problems as a system? They're examples of bigger challenges, and bigger challenges that are human-focused. And they're examples of challenges of sustainability. What do I mean when I talk about challenges of sustainability? I mean, challenges that are broad and global. And one effort to codify what those challenges of sustainability are come from the United Nations. And the United Nations in 2015 developed a set of sustainable development goals, which are 17 global goals that focus on an agreement of what the world's people collectively want, what kind of future people collectively want for themselves and for future generations. 
And these focus on things like eliminating poverty and hunger, ensuring quality education, ensuring gender equality. Preventing health damages from air pollution and ensuring access to energy are some of those goals. Mitigating climate change. Climate change makes a lot of these goals harder. So climate change can make air pollution worse. And ensuring affordable and clean energy is a challenge when we want to mitigate climate change. So these challenges are fundamentally linked. So what my research group does is really take a human-focused approach to these problems, to really try to understand how these problems are linked and try to focus on what, can, what we can learn about them in order to inform solutions. So in order to do that, we use a research approach that looks at practical questions. So one example of how we do that is illustrated by our recent research on China. We looked at the question of whether Chinese climate policy could have air pollution benefits. And in order to do that, we linked a variety of different models for policies, economics, air quality, and health impacts. And what we found was that climate policy actually has substantial air pollution benefits for China in the near term. So we found that by 2030, 95,000 deaths would be avoided in China because of climate policy. And that's because when the economy is so dependent on coal, reducing the reliance on coal reduces CO2, but it also reduces that PM2.5, those fine particles that cause mortalities. But this isn't just a benefit for China. Chinese climate policy can also benefit the US. So those particles that are emitted in China can cross the Pacific, and the impact of Chinese climate policy can actually be avoided mortalities from PM2.5 and ozone exposure all the way in the US. Zooming in to a region of the US, we can see the impact of other kinds of policies. So renewable energy, replacing coal-fired dirty power plants with solar and wind, these can improve air quality in the regions and the states that implement those policies. Increasing renewable energy standards and increasing the fraction of renewables in Midwestern states can reduce particulate matter. And when we actually calculate the benefits, the monetary benefits of these policies, the monetary benefits of these policies exceed their costs. So I've showed you some win-wins, but what I haven't showed you is the complexity of deciding and trying to figure out what those impacts are. There's actually a range of strategies. Some strategies can make air pollution worse. Some strategies can make air pollution better. There's also a bunch of strategies that can make climate change worse, and some strategies that can make climate change better. Coal, fossil fuels, they make air pollution worse, and they make climate change worse. I showed you some renewable energy policies. They can make climate change better and air pollution better. But it's not that simple. There are some strategies that aren't win-wins or lose-loses. For example, some efforts to address emissions from vehicles. So you can see the example of the Volkswagen diesel vehicles. Efforts to increase their gas mileage actually increased pollution in some cases. And there are some strategies that can make climate change worse and air pollution better, reducing some emissions from ships such as some aerosols in the atmosphere that are reflective, can help human health, but also reduce atmospheric cooling because they're reflective. So figuring out these changes and what their interactions are really requires the system's perspective. And this is what my group does. It takes a people-centered approach to really looking at these sustainability challenges using air quality and climate as an example. And people are not only just affected by the environment, they're also affected by technologies, and they're affected by institutions and policies, and all these things are interacting. So the real challenge is to understand what those interactions are in ways that can inform policies that address these large-scale sustainability challenges. So when we're thinking about things like the Sustainable Development Goals, the area of air quality and climate is just one example of policies that can interact. So the ultimate goal is to really understand better how these interactions occur and to map them out and to use that knowledge and develop that new knowledge in order to inform better policies. So what I've done together with my students and collaborators is just a first step in this goal. And I hope to work together with stakeholders 
and with other researchers in the future to develop new methods and new knowledge and bridge that knowledge to the much needed action that is required to meet the global sustainability challenges. Thank you.